Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf your one and only. And how all my adventures doing? Welcome back to another Lost Saga video. So in this video, we're gonna be explaining the basics of comboing or starting combos. I'll do comboing like way later on. Right now, we're just gonna go with the basics for beginners who are looking into getting into Lost Saga and who are completely new to Lost Saga. So. One of the many unique things about Lost Saga is that you can combo into different characters. So let's say if I'm Anubis, as I am right now, I can stun a person, then go into a different character and continue a combo. Then I can go into a different character, continue a combo, then a different one. You know, it's all that proneness that comes into <laughs> that comes into play, you know? The more you do it, the more skilled you'll be at it. I would say just keep swapping and just learning a character. You know, having the main is definitely important because if you have that main character, you'll get used to it and start opening up people for longer combos. So let's say for me, I play Anubis as of right now. I can start a combo off of this or I can start a combo off of this. You can even start a combo off of a knockdown. So, normal fame that can happen off of basics is just this one, but it's faster on knockdown. Or there is a half faint. As you can see, the character like sort of flinches over. That is a half faint. This is a full faint when they fall to their knees and go to the ground. Holding their stomach is just like a mini full faint, which most of the time is useless just because you gotta switch to a character that, you know, can immediately use it. Let's say if I wanna use Dokubi. Yeah, not fast enough. But if I was to use the full faint, don't be is actually able to combo off of it so you gotta know pretty much your timing and everything you know ground combos are a thing too it's really useful to use it on dk because unfortunately for some reason your npc mercenaries take longer to get off the ground than dk dk is like a normal character that gets off the ground faster so if you guys want to come in hq and just combo test all, all your things i would recommend using it on dk even though i feel like he definitely has a smaller hitbox so it, it probably won't go the same way that you would want it in the match but it will still be pretty close let's go with robin hood robin hood has a faint so he'll be fine into fire mage i would say try and make a combo that uses less skills because then you're just going to be running around you know taking your time waiting for skills it's definitely a lot better to come up with combos that doesn't require using skills all right for an example let's go with anubis and viking There are different ways you can do this. If you have the timing of a saint, <laughs> you can hit them on the way down. Or, let's say um, if I have Captain Hook, which I think I do have, right? Yeah, here he is. Captain Claw. I'm going to put Captain Claw as three. That's another combo you can do for yourself as well. Or you could do a classic combo that a lot of people start off with, with a skill. That is another combo you can do. Classic fire mage like burn actually keeps people on the ground longer. So there are different types of effects you can use. Like I said, Fire Mage keeps people on the ground longer just because of the, you know, burn. I don't understand why. Don't don't question it. You can do feints 
or knockbacks or knockdowns I, I would say knockdowns also count as a combo starter too if you're fast enough so with viking i know that there is a way to faint it's just you have to be quick with your whole d's if i remember oh maybe i'm maybe it isn't through happy i remember people always like fading me with that okay no don't don't listen to me on the viking thing okay so there's another combo you can do with ice mage i'm just gonna tell you this a lot of the mages in the game are really great for continuing combos or being a follow-up combo so let's say do this That's one for the fire mage. I don't have lightning mage right now. I'll buy that one afterwards. <laughs> There's another one with ice mage. But with ice mage, I would recommend actually controlling the radius, the reticle, and actually triggering it through like the actual means of it instead of like, instead of like these little hotkeys, I would recommend moving it then pushing your block button while you're holding your attack. That activates your weapon skill. I'd rather you guys do that instead of uh, doing it through just the basic means because it because it's just going to go in front of you, like right here. This is the max range of where it's going to start if you use the weapon skill. So you will have to adjust yourself just for you to be able to use this once you've done that combo. So yeah. All right, let's restart that and go from the top to the better way of doing it. Because you get more of a guarantee that the ice is going to happen with Ice Mage if it's in the middle of the reticle like that. Okay, let's do Lightning Mage now. Lightning Mage actually has some pretty good gears. For continuing a combo. I'm not sure if it actually stands up on half faints though. Oh yeah, it has a requirement. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know why we have requirements in the beta. Just saying. <laughs> uh, let's try a different one then. Let's say Sapper. Sapper actually has a common combo that a lot of people use off of half faints. There's just many different ways you guys can combo this. Just, just saying. Like that. Especially if an enemy is like pretty much on the verge of death and doesn't have any any HP and our gears are falling off. That's like a really good way to take off two gears as you're fighting. Now there's another way you can do. You don't have to use the weapon. Just because this is fast too. You just have to be a lot closer if you're going to do it. Pretty sure DK is going to die if I do that anyway. So let's let's do it without the weapon now out the weapon skill as you see that counts as two combos so that's like two extra hits you can get in now you can play around sapper mines but it's really difficult to do that so i wouldn't even recommend just like playing through a whole bunch of why waiting for them to fall forward or anything like that it most people wear sapper armor so yeah <laughs> Just just so you know, a lot of people wear the whole anti-mine thing, so I wouldn't even recommend like even trying it. So let's say if you're a Viking main, there is a combo you can do between pirate and Viking. You guys remember when I said that knockups like that and knockdowns are pretty much combo starters if you're fast enough? Yeah. Watch how fast he gets back up. You gotta be pretty quick to start a combo off that. 
So let's go with the lift, firebomb, and lift again. And that's actually a higher lift off that too. So you can actually go into something else afterwards if you're fast enough. I actually think you can actually get a second lift off of the Viking. And maybe if you're quick enough on it. So yeah, that's also another combo you can do. Like I said, dude, Lost Saga has so many possibilities and combos. That's why a lot of people need to be getting into this game, just because there's just there's just a large skill cap that's so much fun to actually experience. If you haven't experienced Lost Saga, I would recommend getting into it. We have so many unique characters, and it, it it's gonna keep going too, because there's like over a hundred characters in this game. Uh, too bad we won't be having the unique characters. Hopefully not. <laughs> They'll cut back on a few characters. That don't want to be dealing with that BS. But yeah, <laughs> just quite a lot of things to experience. Um. I'm pretty sure they're going to add back faction. So there is ranking and stuff and like that. If you want to start getting competitive, you know, one be wanting people inside of ladder, you know, or you can go with your own like guild and start doing like guild battles too. Or I think it's actually like team factions. I think you get more points if you're with guild mates or stuff like that. But yeah, it's a little bit of fun stuff like that. That's behind the competitive scene too. You can do tournaments in this game pretty easily too. There's spectators. If you want to like spectate matches or live stream like tournaments, stuff like that. Lost Saga has a lot of things to welcome new players with. So let's say if you want to get real tricky with gears, there are some gears that cause half fate, like the ninja armor that you can use. You can put on like any other character's gear except for weapons. Obviously, you don't want your Anubis to be used in Western Gunner. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you can put on like any armor, helmet or cape from any other character onto your character so let's say the ninja armor actually creates a half fate so there is another way you can use it too you can use it when jumping and if you guys don't know anubis actually half fates on on his jumbo attack so let's do this into a full faint if you want to actually like start getting tricky or you know stylish a little bit <laughs> That, that is a way to do it. The Anubis doesn't lift off like feints and stuff like that. So do learn your character that you want to main in and out. Like, I mean, explore the hell out of any possibility of a combo you guys can or anything you can like start off of it. You can play with different gears and stuff if you want. Uh, most people with their main character, they mostly have passive gear. Just so they're just because they work it into their brain. Well, at least I do. This is how I treat passive armor. I at least work it into my brain to never just start spamming skills. For like uh, combos for my main character. So I put in like I put in a whole bunch of passive gears. So let's say Sapper Armor, like I said, a lot of people use. There it is. You'll see a lot of people carrying like our Knight Armor too. A uh, helmet that a lot of people carry is football helmet just because it reduces fall damage. Or Zoro. Zoro actually works too. Then uh, Viking Shield would actually be the next one. I forgot if uh, passives actually raise your skills faster. I don't. I don't think it does. Anybody can correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, most people just carry like the whole passive set just so they don't use skills. Because I know I do this for a reason of. 
I'm way too heavy on skills, so I just have all my skills available afterwards. But as you can see, all of my skills, if I click all of their passive activings, activates, it does nothing. If I do this with a um, Zoro hat, which is supposed to uh, allow you to roll if you double dash in a certain direction after an air attack. Doesn't matter if you hit it or miss, as long as you attacked in the air, you're good. Even if you like screw up and are already close to the ground, you can still roll. It's a good safety tool. But yeah, most people are going to be carrying gears like this with just a whole bunch of passives. Viking armor is going to be really annoying to you because it actually causes a really good deflect versus um, Aronite armor, which just pushes you back. This actually deflects you and it's going to be really annoying to fight against if you're like behind an enemy. So always try and be in the front of a, a Viking shield player. Then there is the Zoro hat, which I can just use pretty much any time. As long as I air attack and double dash in the direction I want to go, I'm pretty much golden. Uh, there are sapper mines to where I'm just immune to mines completely. So I don't think I take damage from mines at all, if as long as I have the gear. So it's always great to have like these passives, you know, when using your main. So there are some armors you can, well, some trinkets you can use without using actual gear stuff. So let's say if I had, there was this gear or wing gear, actually. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good example. So let's say this skill right here is um, used, has a gauge that slowly goes down. And it goes back up. So let's say if I have my Michael, which I think is all the way down here. Yeah. So let's say if I have my Michael's wings, it doesn't use any of the gauges. This is literally just a passive at this point. You can use this all you want. So let's use it again. Swap to this. And you see it didn't use the skill at all. So yeah, there's a lot of gears that have just passive properties that you can use all the time, which are like a lot better and gets you ready for starting combos and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm going to end it off there. Hope you guys enjoyed. There are tons of different gears in the game to keep it fresh and new for you, especially if you are new to Lost Saga. There are a ton of characters to work towards. Um, when the open, well, when the grand open starts, which is March the 3rd, a lot of these characters are going to be locked behind ranking. So you'll probably have to like rank up pretty far to get the characters or you can just straight up buy them permanently or for 30 hours. Which the 30 hours, 30 hours, I'm pretty sure is playtime. However long you're in the match, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's pretty much how long you're in a match because I've I played this much. So when well, you're in a match, yeah, this goes, this starts going down. When well, you're not, yeah, it's pretty much just staying there. So you're pretty much good. But yeah, tons of characters you can use. You can even straight up buy gear if you really like it. So let's say if you really want your Anubis weapon, you can just come in here and buy it if you want to. Or you can have a chance of getting it permanent through like chests. So there's also free to play options too. It's just earning chests and doing dailies. Dailies are actually pretty easy to get behind too. Lots of titles too. You can also get permanent characters through this little uh, time gate too. There's a chance of it. That's how I got my uh, storm. Stormtrooper. But yeah, there's dailies for uh, reward boxes. I don't really know what's in the reward boxes. I haven't really checked, nor have I cared really. <laughs> and then there are the weekly missions that gives a permanent gear chest, which is pretty much fantastic. Then there's a plus 10. Well, no, plus 20, actually. Permanent gear that you can get for the monthly rewards for doing 
a hundred dailies. So yeah, you can also get a free style merc pack too. So pretty much you can change yourself to straight up female if you want to and put in like any design you want. Which is pretty nice. But well, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys will join Lost Saga today. But that's it. Until then, peace out.